Before I begin with the video, let me tell you that during the early stages of theatre, that is before the world of microphones, speech was very important. Actors had to be able to articulate clearly and project to the audience, so anything in their mouth would distort speech, even fangs. So even when they had to play vampiric roles, fangs were never in play. With that said, it is quite difficult to imagine vampires without fangs, isn't it? But that's how it was. Historical accounts of vampires include blood in the coffin and blood on the mouth, but no fangs for drawing of said blood. Even in Bela Lugosi's landmark 1931 portrayal, Dracula didn't have fangs. Now, some believe that the undead have appeared in Western folklore since at least the 18th century. But most agree it was not until Bram Stoker's classic 1897 novel Dracula that fans became widely associated with vampires in popular imagination. In literature as well, many poems with mention of vampires never had the mention of fans. Perhaps the earliest literary instance of a fanged vampire occurs in the first chapter of Varney the Vampire of 1840, which goes, with a plunge, he seizes her neck in his fang-like teeth. Note here, yeah? that description was fang-like, not simply fangs. A few decades later, the eponymous Carmilla in 1871 had the line that said, I quote, The sharpest tooth, long, thin, pointed like an awl, the tooth of a fish. All the vampires of Dracula of 1897 had pointy teeth. The three vampire women of the castle, the transformed Lucy, and of course, Dracula himself. One of the earliest cinematic vampires, Max Schreck's portrayal of Graf Orlok in Nosferatu in 1922, spotted prominent rat-like incisor fangs. While fangs began to appear on the big screen in the 1950s in Turkish and Mexican productions of Dracula, True vampire fans say it was the 1958 British Hammer Films version starring Christopher Lee in the title role that popularised fangs in movies. It was then that fake fangs made their way to the public thanks to Halloween. Brian Cronin, a long-time entertainment journalist, notes that the 1964 vampire mask marketed by Ben Cooper Inc which was then one of the largest U.S. manufacturers of Halloween costumes, did not have fangs, but by 1978, it did. In the 1990s, role-playing tabletop games like Vampire the Masquerade even inspired folks to join a community of people who identified as real vampires, according to J. Gordon Melton, a distinguished professor at Baylor's University Institute for studies of religion, who has also written and edited scholarly books about vampires. And vampire costumes weren't complete without fangs. Studies show that this vibrant subculture only contributes a small portion of the fangs sold annually worldwide. Scarecrow Vampire Fangs was established in 1993 and currently ships 250,000 sets of fangs to more than 35 countries every year, primarily for Halloween. Co-founder Linda Caplice attributes the success of her products to the enduring appeal of vampires. According to Caplice, people like the idea of living forever and being powerful. Till today, fans have become a symbol of the vampire's predatory nature emphasizing their ability to pierce the flesh and extract the life-giving essence of their victims. As literature continued to influence popular culture, the image of vampires with fearsome fangs became deeply ingrained in the collective imagination. The cinematic realm continued to shape the perception of vampire fangs. As special effects improved, Fangs became a pivotal aspect of a vampire's on-screen presence, accentuating their deadly allure. In contemporary pop culture, vampires have undergone further transformations and their fangs have adapted accordingly. 
Television series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, True Blood and the Vampire Diaries showcase a range of interpretations from traditional fearsome fangs to more refined and stylized versions. The customization of fangs allow for diverse portrayals that cater to varied audience preferences. The journey of how vampires acquired their fangs is a multifaceted narrative that intertwines ancient folklore, literary imagination and cinematic innovation. From the earliest myths to the present-day interpretation, the evolution of vampire fangs reflects not only the changing perceptions of these mythical beings, but also the broader cultural shifts and societal influences of vampire law. Well guys, we have come to the end of the video, but I would love to know your opinions on vampire fangs, so do let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching and before you go, please remember to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.